Hi, I'm Deanna. Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm working on a little project today that I think would be fun and easy for so many people that I thought I would document it a little bit better than just putting it into one of the Coffee Time episodes and show you how I did it in case you're interested in doing something similar. Now, this project is geared for beginner punch needlers or people who, done, who do a lot of punching and hooking or latching or whatever kind of rug making and are just looking for a different a quick fun project, maybe a nice gift. I see this project as being potential chair pads, chair covers, something like that, something for the table. This is a small project I've been working on. Um, this is a preview of it, but I want to show you where the inspiration comes from. I was looking for very easy projects for beginners that um, I could include lots of colors of wool, a punch needle, a hoop, everything to get a beginner started in a very inexpensive way. So it had to be a design that would be very fast for me to draw, transfer onto backing and send out with all of the other supplies that would be included in the kit. And I wanted to keep the price point very low. So I was looking for a design that would be simple uh, and effective. And I thought, think back to historic designs, right? Because there, there is nothing new under the sun, right? We've all heard that one before. And one of the oldest designs that is persistently the most successful is a design that is sometimes called broken glass, mosaic, um, jigsaw. This is the design. And I know you've seen this before. This is the back of it in its heyday, how colorful and pretty it is, right? Um, Heritage in Rhode Island, the company made a, a pattern called Jigsaw. And I think often we mistake the Cushing um, uh, broken glass or mosaic patterns for Jigsaw uh, because they are a little bit different. This is another example. I have so many rugs that I have found over the years at yard sales, um, you know, in flea markets, this one in very bad condition but as an inspiration piece and something we can look at, just gorgeous. So I thought, why not go sort of harken back to one of those nice old designs because they're so easy and simple to do. Now, what I did with my project here, I've been working on it already, as you can see, uh, I wanted to use lots of colors of wool and these are the colors that I ended up dyeing for this project. I think there's 16 in the kit, but these are actually very Victorian colors. I know they don't look like they are because they're screaming, um, but Victorian colors were very bright, much brighter than we think. They were not dour people by any means. So nice, bright colors. What I did was I took in the middle, I drew a silhouette um, of my state. Now, I live in Connecticut now, but I really associate much more with being from Rhode Island. So I drew Rhode Island. Because this is punch needle, it's reversed. Now this is how easy this is for you to do. I have my backing fabric, which if you're punching, really has to be monk's cloth. And I've got my, these are the six New England states. So I'm thinking as a, as a diehard New Englander, I'm thinking about doing another one that has all six states in it because you can see how this is the back of the punch needle, meaning the side that I've been working. You can see how um, easy it is to drop a state into the middle of it, kind of embedded like a secret message. You know it's there or your friend who you're giving this to as a gift knows that their state is there, but it's very hard to see it. I popped it a little bit with the black and I'm in the middle of hooking some more of the black in. Uh, it's more of a dark gray and antique black, but you see how easy it would be using a shape. Now I had to cut the little islands, little block islands, the little islands off Rhode Island, and you would probably have to do the same with some of these. I would leave the Cape on Massachusetts, but I'd cut out the vineyard in Nantucket. Some of them have too many islands to deal with, but the shape of the state of the state itself, you can see would fit in really well with this kind of pattern right? How nice is that? So it's been real easy to do this and you don't need my kit to do this unless you need the punch needle and all that. I've been using this punch needle that I sell. This is one that comes out of Brazil and um, I stock them. They're my favorites. This is um, this brand of needle comes in four sizes and this is the second or the third one up. It's still considered a fine but I really like it because it holds the two ply wool the best um, and it has a washer on it. It comes with two washers. I end up taking a washer out. Um, my mother hooks with three washers or punches with three washers. So it really depends on the height of the pile. If you're a beginner punch needler, you might not have figured out yet that the numbers in terms of uh, talking about an Oxford style needle, the numbers that you're talking about relate to the height of the pile. 
There are only two categories of needles typically, fine and regular. This company in South America does uh, four, but they're quite close to each other, to be honest. And the, this one that I stock, the only one that I stock is the one that I feel is the most successful and my favorite. What I like about this needle, and this is the one that comes with the kit, obviously, is that you can put one washer, two washers, is gonna give you a very low pile. I put one washer for kind of a medium pile, and I'll show you. And I put the washer right over the channel uh, that this is running through. On these needles, whatever size they are, fine, very fine, uh, all the way up, they all have these eyelets, so they turn a hair, which is nice because you can adjust it to, particularly if you're a left-handed person, you could turn it away. But for a right-handed person too, I adjust it a little bit because I always tend to work the same way. And I've got that washer locking in that yarn and it makes it that much easier to do what I need to do, which is just travel with it. Now, again, if I had my two washers on because it comes with two washers, it would be a much um, lower pile on the other side, on the finished side. Depends on what you like. Some people want no washers. They like a quite high pile um, and a lot of people like a quite high pile and then to clip to give you almost a latch hook effect. Uh, but for me, I don't like the super low pile like my mom. She likes, she almost likes the back, the look of the back more than the front with channels showing uh, and really no pile. And a lot of people prefer that. So for those people using two, three, even four washers is what they would prefer to do. But for me, I like a, a medium pile. So you can see it's really easy uh, punching something like this. I'm literally just, am I worrying about whether I'm going into every space? No, I don't want to go into every space because then I would be packing. But I do turn the needle as I go and I will do more videos on punching to show you um, my technique. Everybody works a little bit differently and of course you have to work the way uh, that you get the best speed and accuracy because um, you want to travel and get work done too besides, you know, um, it, it looking good. But I hold the needle in a slightly different way. I hold it a little more turned than I think most people hold it. But that's just the way that my hand's gotten used to doing it over time. Um, and yours, of course, will be different. But it is very fast going. These yarns that I dyed for this kit are Briggs & Little 2-ply. I get them from the Maritime family in Maine. Uh, it's a little family business, and they are fantastic. The prices are great, and I dye them. So again, I dyed this pack. Uh, thinking about Victorian sea colors and, and Victorian colors, which were quite dramatic. If you think about Queen Anne houses and that kind of thing, um, very dramatic colors. And these are pretty traditional for jigsaw patterns. And you can either use, I used white as my outline in color. You could either use white or the antique black. It would be up to you because you get extra large skeins of both of those. Now, I just punched that one little piece that quickly and I'll just give you a sneak preview I'm gonna have to do lots of um, clips and, and fixes but underneath there you can see it really comes along fast and there's Rhode Island uh, the right side up video might be flipped but it's right side up for me when I pull this up very fast project very easy project you don't really need me to do this project if you already have a punch needle or a hook I think it's just a great idea to embed um, a secret image like a state into something like this kind of composition, a beautiful old historic competition that has stood the test of time composition and put your state or your province or your country in there. Something special, even your town, the shape of your town, something special that only you know what the symbolism is. And what a fast project to punch, really fast and really fun. So kits are available. Um, otherwise, take this idea and run with it. Do your own thing and have fun with it. Very easy, very fun, and again, a really great gift. I will see you next time on the Ribbon Candy Hooking Channel. Bye.